guys, what's up and welcome back to my PhD life. After multiple hiccups over the last few weeks, a new one this week where I had another new injury, uh, I thought it's important to get back to things that I love doing, to get back to things that I wanted to do to, with this channel and sort of bring some energy back into my life. So here I am back at my PhD life. Today's video is going to talk about uh, how did I sort of plan and steer my PhD since the pandemic hit. What were the kind of activities that I undertook to make sure that things were on track, I could finish in time and what are the kind of challenges I faced. For people who are in their third, fourth or fifth year of their PhD, you, might, you would probably relate with the kind of experience I had and the kind of suggestions I have would be helpful for you. I'll make a separate video for people who are in their first and second year of their PhD because the kind of things that students can do or are expected to do in their first or second year are very different from their later years and this video is because I was in close to three and a half years of my PhD when the pandemic hit last year uh, this video will sort of address uh, issues of people who are in third fourth or fifth year and as I said I'll make another one for the first two year students so when the pandemic hit and uh, our institute IIC said that you should go back home because no one was sure what's going to happen in March 2019, I thought that, and initially we were told that it's a two weeks break, everyone has to go back and then we'll start calling people back. So I thought, okay, uh, and things were intense at that time, but it wasn't, you know, pretty intense and no one had thought that it could be one and a half years and counting. So I thought that, okay, it'll be a nice break to go home and spend some time with my family and then get back to work and continue. But it was somewhere when it was beyond, I think, two months that I realized that looks like this is something pretty serious and not going away too quickly. And I need to figure out how am I going to make things work sitting at home. I know how painful it has been, especially for experimentalists, because... For people who are doing modeling or simulations, they could still sit at their home, write their codes, put their jobs in sequence at the computational facility at their institute and get things done. It was challenging for them also. I'm not taking anything away from their struggle, but it was just another level of challenges for experimentalists who, if they had a cell culture running and then there was a 14 days break, it's gone. So they have to come back and start it again. For people who are doing who are working with other sort of live bacteria or viruses which need to be active or need to be kept active for whatever experiments they plan. It's, it's been really, really tough. And I've been mostly an experimentalist with my PhD research. So I also sort of was going through this patch as to, oh my God, I have a set of experiments remaining. I had a project, uh, most of the experiments for a project remaining. And then how am I going to execute them sitting at home? So these were all the challenges that I have faced in person and you know sort of been there done that and so the first thing i did was to list down what all projects were finished undergoing and planned in future for my phd what all were the activities that have been finished and what are the activities that are remaining it took me i think four to five days to put all this together in a very comprehensive manner but why it helped was it helped me get clarity on things and sort of bring down the anxiety that was building in me because of feeling like, oh, I'm sitting at home. It's been one month. It's been one and a half month. It's been two months and my work is completely stopped. My PhD is going to be derailed like anything. And, you know, how am I going to finish in time? What will be the financial implications of that? What, how will be my future prospects impacted and all of that? So there was a lot of stress building up. But doing this exercise of listing down all the projects that were done uh, ongoing and designed for future sort of helped me get a sense of things, uh, clear my head of all the unnecessary thoughts that were going on and, get, you know, get in charge of my position. So that was the first thing I did. The second important thing that I started to do after I made this list was whatever was marked as completed. I started compiling data for all that work which would go into my thesis and I think that was a very very important and good decision that I took because many students uh, what they would do is that I know all of us love primes and Netflix and all of that but if there's nothing to do we at least initially a lot of time was spent on you know binge watching and doing all of this but not 
sort of realizing that this time could be very well used to compile your results, make figures, write papers, write your thesis and things like that. So that's an important thing I did. Whatever was completed, I started compiling, writing it up, writing rough outlines for papers that could come out of all the compiled work that I was collecting. And here I would like to make a special note for my PhD advisor, Dr. Bhushan Tole, because this is a practice that he inculcated in me during the early years of my PhD. When I'll be, whenever I'll be like, say, 50% through a project, he would ask me, hey, Navjot, let's talk about an outline as to where this project is going, what are we expecting and what can we publish out of it. And that always helped me keep track of where my project is going, what all experiments am I doing, are they valuable, where am I investing my time. And this was a really valuable skill that I learned. So that was the second thing, compiling data, writing outlines for my paper, papers, which could come out of those projects and writing outline for my thesis. As months passed and I realized that, okay, I have a lot more time on my hand, I started working on writing my thesis. So I wrote the introduction because that is something that you could write if you have an idea of what's the overall broad scope of your PhD. And then chapter by chapter, I started writing whatever work that was completed. Wherever I felt that, okay, I need some more data or a new experiment here, I would lead, leave empty boxes and spaces, but say clearly what is it that I want to populate them with. And that also helped me build clarity on what all is it that's remaining to be done. The fourth and another important thing that I did was that I started looking for online conferences. Uh, when COVID had not hit, I was invited for a conference for a poster presentation in Busan in Korea last year in July. But COVID hit and that didn't happen. And that is now going to finally happen this year online. And then to this year also, I was supposed to go to Italy for a conference for an oral talk. But that also has been moved to a virtual platform because of COVID. So I made sure that because if whenever I was in ISC and whenever I, we are in campuses, you know, we actively look for these positions where we can attend sessions. We look for these opportunities where we can attend sessions, learn more about our field or fields related to our area or completely orthogonal to our area, just to sort of build that researcher mind and open our minds to different kinds of thought processes. But with COVID and sitting at home, all of that was not happening. So I made sure that I attend conferences. Last year, I attended two virtual conferences and made my work presentations there. That also helped me hone my presentation skills and know how to present my work to international audience and make connections. So that's the fourth thing. Go and look for online virtual events, conferences, seminars and attend them dedicatedly. As time passed by, I started realizing that I might be closing towards the end of my PhD and my thesis was coming up well and I've been fortunate that I had this data. I feel strongly for, I had the data to compile my thesis and, you know, have good enough work. But I strongly feel for all the experimentalists out there, I've been experimentalist most of my PhD and I know how devastating COVID has been for us. Every 14 days or 10 days, there'll be a break in work if there's a lockdown in the institute or the city or the state or the country. And that has been really damaging for people who have active experiments. So I completely understand your pain. I also went through some of these losses. I was fortunate that I was able to find an assistant who was living in the city and who could come into the campus, do some work and then go, go back. So that sort of helped me finish another set of experiments that were pending and put together a publication which wouldn't have been possible if I didn't have my wonderful intern, Mridul Kamal, working on this project with me at that time. So that's where you realize the importance of collaboration and having a good team while you're doing research. Okay, and the last thing, and a very, very important thing that I feel many, many, many PhD students lag on, and we shouldn't, because this is a very important part in our career, but we just keep on procrastinating or neglecting it, thinking that we, the only important job is to do good science in the lab. It's very, very important to good science in the lab and get your papers, get your thesis. But it's important to search for opportunities that you're going to work on after your PhD is finished, right? So you need to build your CV. You need to start looking for job opportunities. You need to start thinking about whether you want to get into academics or industry. And I think the ideal time is to start somewhere around three and a half, three years because it's a tough, confusing question. 
and usually by the end of the phd even by the end of the phd students are not able to figure an answer for this so it's important that you start asking yourself whether you want to be in the industry or be in academics look at your personal situation and see what favors it and try to come to a conclusion and start prepping for it so if you want to be into academics you have to learn how to write grants you have to get some courses to ta you have to try if you get some teaching opportunities and then see if you want to go for a postdoc how you're going to make your postdoc applications which are the labs around the world that you're interested in all of this need times and preparation and covid has given you a lot of time to sit at home and do all of this so work on this if you are planning to get into industry learn what an industrial cv looks like it's very different from an academic cv learn what are the kind of skills they are looking for start applying for jobs because you'll apply for many and probably get called for a few and then interview for even few and then be selected for even few maybe one or two so that's also something that will take a lot of your time because you have to prep for whatever you have done in your research then prep your subjects and then prep according to the company or the field that you're applying in so that's the fifth point make your resume make your cv start looking for job opportunities whatever it might be postdoc academic industrial and start streamlining your thought and your profile according to what you're going to apply for after your phd so while i know uh, the pandemic has disrupted life of researchers like anything especially experimentalists my heart goes out to all, to all you guys because i've been there and suffered it uh, but you know even if you're having some bad days or you've had a lot of bad days and still struggling to sort of close ends on the work that you've been doing to go on to the next chapter hang in there this will pass and you'll go through to finish the video on a high note i want to share with all of you that i have been making my job applications and i was offered a position to work with dr reddy's lab in the research and development unit so that's an r&d role where i'll be working on drug development and it's in the pharma industry and we'll talk more about it once i start spilling beans about what i what i will be doing in this new phase of my research career so take care you guys stay safe stay healthy and i'll see you soon bye bye